So double down on platform activities, platform business model activities, not technology platforms, just to remind you. And secondly, make sure there are synergies between all the activities as well. So this is not about diversifying. This is really quite important. It's about making sure that the new types of business models you create pull demand for your core business and there are strong synergies between everything you do. And that's, we've talked before about how Amazon has managed to do this. The other key point is about investing heavily in new technology and skills. And some of the examples we showed earlier on in the previous module were about how companies have made a very big shift in where they allocate their capital to technologies and new platform-based business models. And we showed the example of Ping An, which we've talked about quite a bit. And we showed also about taking the long view, looking ahead, understanding where the puck is going, enables you to dramatically outpace your competition and start to compete with companies that in the past were seen as much more important than you were. However, a word of caution, uh, these types of bold moves do require careful engagement of investors. So investors tend to see your company in, in, a, certain, in a certain way. They categorize you and they expect certain returns. When you're trying to break out of that constraint, if you like, it can be difficult for investors to keep up with you. I'll show you an example. ProSiebenSat is a German TV company. Um, and they decided some years ago that they wanted to move out of or beyond content and start to leverage the assets and their audience in new ways. And they created a whole series of commerce platforms. So not just creating and distributing content, uh, TV content, but they said, well, why don't we distribute products to niche audiences, niche communities who watch our programs? Great strategy. That strategy has been very successful over the last couple of years. They've increased their revenues compared to their competitors. They've increased their profits compared to their competitors, their traditional competitors, but their market capitalization has followed the same trend as the rest of the market. And the reason for that is that investors, or they haven't spent enough time perhaps um, explaining to investors the benefits of that type of business model. Maybe the investors have not been on a course like this to understand how these types of business models work and why they'll create even more value in the future. But the value they've created in terms of revenue is quite significant. They've nearly doubled their revenue over the last uh, few years. And that's primarily because they have added this new type of platform-based business model to their mix. And it's allowed them to go beyond content into commerce, which is very attractive for their customers, very attractive to their merchant and advertising partners as well who want to connect and sell things as well as just promote themselves to end users. And as I promised, I want to share with you one of my favorite companies at the moment, SoftBank. It's a Japanese company that has made some very significant bold moves. Now SoftBank started life as a telco in Japan, a very successful telco in Japan. But just look at how different it is from a typical telco. This is a typical telco's business model portfolio where it invests its money. SoftBank, dramatically different here. Only about half its business or it's the way it allocates capital is related to investing in a physical telco network. It has invested heavily in technology and has invested heavily in platform-based business models. It originally brought Yahoo to Japan and runs that and integrates it with its telco. That adds a lot of value there. But over the last few years, it has invested in many, many more platform businesses. It invests in Didi, which is an Uber equivalent in China, it invests in Uber, WeWork, Slack, all kinds of platform businesses around the world. And as a result, its share price has diverged dramatically from traditional telcos. These are a basket of traditional telcos. Their market capitalization has not changed over the last eight years. The share price of SoftBank is significantly better. But you'll notice there's quite a bit of volatility here as well. SoftBank's quite a maverick company. It's led by a maverick. And often investors don't understand why it might have created a $100 billion investment fund, bigger than all the private equity funds in the world today, to invest in new business models around the world. That's what it's done. It started to, it's created a new capability, which is financial investment, which creates synergies with the other activities it has. It creates synergies with its telco businesses in Japan 
and in the US. It creates synergies with its technology activities and it bought Arm Holdings recently, which is the chip maker for potentially the future IoT world, and it has invested heavily in platform-based business models. And this comes from a presentation that the CEO of SoftBank gave recently to investors. And he said, look, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to invest in future business models, primarily their technology business models and platform-based business models. And we use our existing operations. We use the operations where we have lots of customers we're already engaging with. SoftBank in Japan, Yahoo as well, and in the US with Sprint. And we allow these companies, we, give, we, we invest in them, and we allow them to incorporate their activities into our, the operations that we run. And that way, we develop new best practices which help to improve these companies and add value in a synergistic way. And that's why they're growing much more effectively than traditional telcos, using a maverick approach. But you do need enlightened investors to be able to make this shift, and you do need some very strong leadership, of course, back to the, the key point of the Renew process, who really understand how the digital world is evolving and will make big bets on the types of areas that are most relevant for the digital economy.